dresses any well, but if you do, you might have seen our children's show this year, Snow White. Did anyone see it? Woo! Yeah, so awesome. Well, if you did see it, you may recall seven little men dancing on stage to Wannabe by the Spice Girls and many other 90s bops. We were the seven dwarfs. I was the dwarf Gleeful. I wore a green shirt with a matching green hat and overalls. You knew me as the one with the crazy laugh. You saw the one and a half hour show filled with fun dancing, crazy characters, and a great story that taught about women's empowerment. Now, here's what you didn't see. You didn't see the week it took me to pick my monologue, or the week and a half it took me to learn and memorize my monologue. You couldn't see the nerves inside of me as I'm performing said monologue in front, of, in front of all my peers who are also auditioning. You didn't see me staying up until 2 a.m. choreographing seven dance numbers for the show while also trying to memorize my own lines and know my own choreography, which knowing your dances is a lot harder than it looks. <laughs> you didn't see me performing on stage every day for two hours after school, even more during tech week. You didn't see the itchy beards falling off my face, or when I forget to give Kylie, who played the evil queen, her mic back. You didn't even see me spending days over the summer teaching little kids a Britney Spears dance. <laughs> you didn't see that because you didn't have to. You don't pay 12 to $15, maybe even more, to see people who don't have their lives together run around like chickens with their heads cut off on stage. I mean, I do that, but I do it for me and for you. <laughs> you know, there's a lot about me that people don't see, especially with my performing. If you know me even a little bit, you know that I love to be on stage, and I will do it in any way I can. But you pay for the performance. I pay for the work. Well, my parents and I do. <laughs> I do one hour voice lessons once a week, dance four to five nights a week, choir every day, wild cuts on Tuesdays, and I'm usually in a show at Niqua or auditioning for somewhere else. Like I said, I will perform in any way that I can. And now I've always known that I wanted to go into a career as a performer. And I've known this since age five when I was in my first musical, which happens to be The Wizard of Oz. Thank you, Niqua, for putting me in my sixth production of The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> well, like, I mean, I love it. Obviously, I wouldn't do it six times if I didn't. But anyway, I've always known that I wanted to be a performer. But it wasn't until seventh or eighth grade my parents sat me down and they asked me, do you love it? And I told them I did. I loved it with all my heart. They didn't have to ask, though. They could see it. They could see it every time I was someone new on stage. They could see it every time I sang my heart out or went to a dance competition. They could even see it when I spent my entire Saturday last month filling out applications for programs that would last a month long in New York City. Every Saturday, I gave up to go to the city and audition. Every late night, I spent rehearsing. Every time, I sobbed to my mother about getting rejected. Every time, people made me feel like I wasn't good enough to do what I wanted to do, or would say things that would make me feel like I should just quit and stop trying. Every time, I would get lost in the mix of people, pushed to the back row, ignored, because I wasn't talented enough or look right for the part, I kept going. I kept going for me and for you. This audience right here, I kept going because I love to perform. I keep going because I want and do dedicate my life to performing. I keep going because maybe if I didn't, I wouldn't be on the stage today with you, doing what I love, and at the same time, sharing what I love. <laughs> <laughs>